Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Jody Prosnick, and I am thrilled to be here with you today um, for our live stream. I am one third of the Music Education Hub Music Arts Collective, and the other two third is our co artistic director, Amanda Tosoff, and our executive director, Francesca Fung, and they are managing the chat. So um, you can say hi to them, and, uh, and uh, if you're logging on from somewhere fun and exciting, make sure you let us know where you're coming in from, and um, we will say hi to you. So today, uh, this is episode 15 of our live stream series we've been doing since September. We've had a whole bunch of amazing artists join us um, in this live stream conversation series. People like Lila Bielli and Emily Claire Barlow, the wonderful Celine Peterson, Oscar Peterson, Gloria's daughter. Um, we've had uh, Sharon the Bedegay. Um, we've had Mike Rudd and Ernesto Cervini. Um, and it's been great fun. Um, and if you want to check, oh, and of course, Rini Rosnes and, and many others. So if you want to check out that series and listen to some of those interviews, please go to our YouTube channel. They are all uh, archived there. And uh, we also have a bunch of uh, live workshop series, um, free um, tips and tricks on baseline construction and piano comping. Um, we have some about composition, uh, arranging your favorite songs. Um, so please go and take a, a look at the catalog um, on that YouTube channel. And um, yeah, and you all can also uh, check out some of our workshops at Music Arts Collective. You go to www.musicartscollective.com and you'll see full-fledged workshops that you can also uh, pick up there. So that's pretty exciting. So today I am super excited because today it's all about the bass and uh, we've invited one of my very, very favorite bassists and people um, on the planet to join us today, a wonderful Montreal-based bassist named Adrian Vidati. Um, we're going to celebrate the world of jazz bass, chat with him about his career, um, his, uh, his life as a professional musician, and his life as a teacher at McGill University. Um, and I've known Adrian for many, many years. I actually had my formative years in Montreal um, studying at McGill. Um, we were kind of coming up around the same time. Um, and he actually married a, a friend and a colleague of mine from my McGill days, Kate White, who's a wonderful jazz pianist in Montreal. So, um, so I'm thrilled to have him on today today. Um, and uh, he is one of Montreal's finest bass players. Um, since 1998, he's been performing, recording, and touring nationally and internationally. And he's known for his incredibly beautiful sound. He's super creative. Um, and he's really able to connect with a broad array of musicians and with his, you know, soulful playing very soulful playing. He performs t a ton. Um, you know, when I say top call bassist, I mean it. Uh, he's with Montreal musicians like Jim Doxis and Francois Barassa and Al McLean, Christine Jensen, Andre White, the late great Ray Downs, Kevin Dean, Remy Balduc, Yannick Ryu. Um, he's also performed with many um, guests who've come through Montreal, Canadian guests such as Lauren Lofsky and Kirk, Kirk McDonald, uh, Kevin Turcott, um, and then the international stars like Peter Bernstein and Ingrid Jensen and Sheila Jordan and Chet Doxis and Dave Liebman and Ravi Coltrane. So he is one of those guys, you know, sort of the pillars of the community in Montreal. He's received a couple of composition grants um, and a factor grant, um, and he was part of the Mike Red Project, Notes on Montreal, which uh, was awarded the Juno uh, for a jazz, vocal jazz album of the year in 19, or sorry, 2014. We are in the 20th century. Ah! So um, Adrian's been actually really busy during the pandemic and has recorded two albums, the first with Jim and Chet Doxis, two, you know, wonderful, wonderful Canadian um, musicians, um, important members of our jazz community. And also, um, he, he will, um, uh, the, the second one I wanted to chat about was the Code Quartet, which is comprised of Christine Jensen, Lex French, and Jim Doxis. It was just released. And we're going to talk a little bit about that album. It's a beautiful album. It's a cordless album. So it really does feature Adrian's beautiful sound, his beautiful lines. It's so, it's modern and rooted in the tradition. It's just, he's such a magnificent musician. Um, he's also an active educator and he teaches at McGill University. And he, he wrote that he's currently in confinement, like the rest of us. Um, so he's practicing his bass 
and his cello. Um, he composes, he cooks, and he loves to exercise, and he plays music with his beautiful wife, Kate, and their two children. Um, Adrian, I'm going to say one last quote, and then we'll get going here. Adrian Vidati should be considered as one of Montreal's best double bassist. The quality of his rhythmic accompaniment, the fluidity, fluidity of his phrasing, the clarity and roundness of his lines make him one of the most important contributors at the heart of the local scene. And I would argue... Um, is one of the the you know most important pillars of the Canadian jazz scene. So it's not just Montreal and beyond. So I'm so excited to introduce many of you to Adrian. He's a beautiful, beautiful soul. So let's welcome Adrian Vidati to the stage. Yay! <laughs> I sound like Kermit. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> what an introduction! Oh my God! Thank you so much. Oh, okay. well, be open to receive the, the celebratory Jody pontification. <laughs> no, I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, I mean, so much of your, yeah, your musicianship and who you are as a person is something I look to and admire. And um, I think it's a, a wonderful model for a lot of us of how to, to be that person in the world serving the music. Um, oh, so much, thank you so much. It's so coming much. from you. That's a very, a real compliment. I, like you said, um, we did kind of come up around the same time. I, I think you maybe started McGill earlier than I started at Concordia, but mm -hmm. I used to see you on the seed and when I was a young player mm -hmm. uh, playing with, you know, Andre. I remember seeing you once with Andre and it was just like, wow. Oh. What, a, what a great bass player. It was so I was cool. Probably you know just trying to hang on for dear life. Oh, it was amazing. It was, it was, I remember all the way back then, you know, I, well, back then. Oof, yeah. It was a while no, ago. It was, it was a while it was in, ago. It was in the 90s. Yikes. Oh, but um, yeah. So, yeah, coming from you, it's a, a real compliment because I oh. admire you as a musician as well from a very long time, just the way you swing. And it, just the way you you accompany and how you make the band sound so good. It's really like, uh, it's funny, eh? It's like sometimes it's a forgotten thing mm. in, in bass these days, mm -hmm. like how to serve the music, how to make the band sound good. And you mm. always made the band sound so good. And you were playing with a lot of your mentors at McGill mm. as I was playing with a lot of my mentors mm -hmm. at Concordia. And I think... Um, they impressed that, that upon us, maybe mm -hmm. not by saying anything, by just being so great that we wanted to like do a great job of backing oh, yeah. them up, right? Yeah, like, 100%. You were often playing with Greg uh, Clayton. Yeah. And uh, I mean, what a what an I amazing know. guitar player and just amazing person and hilarious, like a one in a one in a billion kind of person, I right? I know. <laughs> he is. So, he is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we could just go on and on about the Montreal scene and how important and formative those relationships and those experiences were for me to 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 really get help me get clear about the kind of musician I wanted to be. I'm Greg in particular. We could gush about him, uh, but yeah, Greg was and is um and andre i mean so many of so many of them i mean i was just felt so like lucky to even be asked and i had no expectation of ever being asked so when i was asked to play i'm sure you probably feel the same way there's just this like mm -hmm. enormous swell of gratitude uh when yeah. anyone when greg called me i remember he called because we had phones we used phones back <laughs> there was no text yes. it was just like we were talking about this earlier I, I remember just like, I think I was with Tilden, my husband, and I just said, oh my gosh, Greg Clay just asked me for a gig. And I made Tilden go and sit at the bar at the corner of the restaurant because I was so like nervous and I just wanted to live up to this moment, you know, and yes. just like, like serve Absolutely. him, you know, serve yeah. the music. Um, Absolutely. And I think that's one of the things, um, yeah, we could go on at length about that. Uh, yeah, I keep, I say to students all the time, I'm sure you do too, like, if you focus on that, everything else kind of falls into place. It's just yeah. like, you know, bringing that energy to, to the bandstand of like, how can I lift the music up and, and, and support people? It's not about me. It was never about me. I didn't pick the bass because I wanted to make it about me. I liked being part of the, the whole. And so yes. I don't know about you. Anyway, I'm chatting yeah. too much. This is what no, happens. Ah! So I, I, 
We're going to get into bass playing. I'm going to circle back to this conversation because I think it's a juicy one. Yeah. But what I want to know, Adrian, is I want to know about your life, like your background. Where did you grow up? Uh, your formative years as a musician. Uh, when did you discover jazz? And I think one of the interesting things I always ask, like, who are the people, if you were to name, like, maybe three people that lit your spark along the way at different points in your journey, who were those people? Um, okay. And how did we end up here being so friggin' brilliant? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, um, well uh, I, I, I actually, um, my mom uh, immigrated uh, to Montreal in 1971 from Bombay. Wow. And my dad followed her shortly thereafter in 1972 and they got married and I was born in 1973. So I grew up actually in Ville Saint Laurent, Montreal till okay. I was nine years old. And, um, uh, I took, uh, a year of piano lessons, uh, with a really nice teacher. Um, I don't think I practiced that much. My brother and I both took lessons and then my dad's company moved to, uh, Ontario and my parents decided to to go to Ontario and so we moved to Mississauga and I remember my mom asking us um, uh, you know sometime once we were settled down there in Mississauga she said so you know I've got to find you another piano teacher and we were like we don't want to take piano lessons we want to play baseball <laughs> and so my mom was like okay and so, uh, I mean, such a huge, I mean, now I look back and let me just also finish that, uh, baseball was amazing. I loved playing little league. So I had so much fun playing little league, but you know, I didn't ever think, you know, I look back now, I was like, damn, I could have used those piano skills, you know? Um, so I, 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 yeah, when I was a kid and like when I was, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, uh, years old in Mississauga, just played sports, always was hanging out with friends outside, running around, you know, being just being a kid. And then in high school, we had to decide about taking an art selective. And I was shy. And I didn't like the idea of theater, like drama. And I always thought I was a terrible visual artist. So I just mm -hmm. didn't want to take visual arts. I was like, No, I'm gonna that's gonna go poorly so the other one was music so i i actually um played trombone in grade nine and ten in the stage band at uh, Loyola secondary school in mississauga and um i did that for two years it was super fun uh i still i look back i i, I try to picture the trombone and what i learned and i remember all the songs we would play but i can't picture the instrument i've never picked one up since uh the end of grade 10 but uh after grade 10 i was sort of like okay well i did my two credits like my two electives i don't have to t i won't do music anymore that was fine but fine i'm good and then i was hanging out with a couple of friends uh i'd go over to my friend ian's house for lunch and this other friend of ours doug would hang out and uh Doug played guitar and Ian sang and played keyboards and they would just um, play these songs. Like we'd be hanging out, having lunch at Ian's house and then they'd play these songs. And I, I was amazed at like, it was the first time where I realized you could play songs that you wanted to play. Right. I, I know that's sort of silly, but when you take piano lessons, you know, you're under the yep. tutelage of the teacher and you know, you're going with the flow. And when you're in, high school band, your director puts a bunch of tunes in front of you and says, you know, you got to learn these and yeah. helps you with technique, gives you a technique book and you can practice that stuff. But never did I make the connection that like, you know, oh, I could learn some tune that I like on this. So I was hanging out with them and they would play these tunes and I'd say, how do you learn them? Um, and they would say, I just, oh, we just listen and we pick it up. I was like, okay, you listen and you pick it up. They're like, yeah, just listen. We just listen to the songs and we sort of figure it out. And they showed me some stuff on keyboards. Ian showed me how to play the uh, the keyboard line up to jump, Van Halen's jump. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> right? So, and I was just like, wow, that's really cool. And I, I said, well, maybe I should get a guitar or something, you know, and we could have a band. And they both said like almost in unison, 
no, get a bass. <laughs> we need a bass player. And so I was like, okay. So I took uh, the GO train in Toronto. They have this thing called the GO train from the suburbs, the commuter train. And I got on, I got on it and I went to uh, Queen Street in Toronto and I went to Steve's Music and I had a bunch of cash with me. And I bought a Yamaha electric bass and a little practice amp for 400 bucks. And I came home and I just started learning tunes and hanging out with my two friends, Ian and Doug, and uh, learning these tunes. And we just hang out and play music together. And I thought it was like, it was very pure. It was yeah. really like so fun. Like it's hard to describe how fun it was. I just... I just thought it was amazing, but I never, uh, even in those times, I never thought of it beyond w the act of just getting together mm -hmm. with them and playing music, which is so cool, right? Like just to that, you're like, we're just getting in together. Like, you want to come over? We're going to play. Yep. I'm there. Bring the bass over and hang out and play. And that, that, that kept me going for grade 11, 12 and 13. I just did it, uh, played in, I, we ended up getting a drummer. And then we got another drummer and that was my, ended up being one of my best friends in like uh, those later years of high school, Ian four. And, uh, and then when I met this other friend, Dave Carey, we started a different band and we would hang out and play all this like prog rock and so great, uh, psychedelic rock Toronto. You know, you just listen to Q107 and you listen to like, you know, psychedelic Sundays. We tape, you know, the whole like psychedelic tape. Sundays, we would tape yeah. it and just like listen to all this yeah, stuff and yeah, be like, yeah. wow, wow, wow. Yeah. You know, so music was always this sort of like really fun thing mm -hmm. uh, that I did. I never thought about it beyond it being this. It was just a, it was an acti a social activity with friends. Mm -hmm. I don't think I had any um, expectations at all. I, uh and in fact, my two friends, Ian Four and Dave Carey, Dave actually went to Humber in jazz eventually. Um, great guitar player. Uh, but in the in those, I was finishing grade 13 and I was taking like math and science, mm -hmm. uh, history, creative writing, English. I did, I was getting into the, I was getting into the arts via lit literature. Um but mostly like very big math nerd, like really high math grades, like super nerd. And I, you know, my, my mom's a biochemist and my dad's a, a financial analyst. Um, uh, there's not, there's doctors in the family and there's, there's, they're professionals, you know, uh, civil engineers and things like that. There's no, mu there are no musicians on the Vidadi side or the Lobo side, but actually, on my dad's side, his two uncles, my grandma's uh, two brothers, were filmmakers in India. Hmm. So there is that. So there was mm -hmm. this creative side. And my dad uh, often would talk about wanting to take piano lessons, but only his, his uh, he calls them his cousin sisters because he was an only child. But his, he has four cousins. Three of them were sisters. Mm -hmm. And they were allowed to take piano lessons, but the boys were not allowed to take piano lessons. Yeah. Odd. And he always wanted to do that, you know, um, mm. Mm. but, you know, still, th that doesn't mean they were not at all. It was never encouraged that one could be uh, a musician. One could study music uh, right. at university. So um, it took me a little while to figure it out. I went to U of T in humanities and uh, I was living in Toronto with my girlfriend and uh I think I got to just after March break and I realized, no, this mm. is not it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After reading week and I did the uh, silly thing of dropping out <laughs> right at the end. I had all A's. I could have oh, just wow. coasted, got my credits and like a very stubborn person. So I, this is something about me. I'm a very stubborn person. And when I make up my mind, I make That's up it. my mind and it's mm -hmm. a, it, it can be a good quality. It could be a, also I've made many rash decisions that I regret sometimes. So, mm. uh, you know, like playing baseball instead of taking piano lessons. Uh, no, but baseball was good. Um, so uh, my girlfriend and I got jobs. We traveled in Europe 
we traveled in Europe, Morocco, and India. And in, I was uh, 20 years old, so uh, 1993. And we traveled for about five months. And somewhere there, I realized that music was the one thing that I really loved to do. You know, and it just it just took a little bit of I needed that time to be away mm. from school. And I just mm. it wasn't like, oh, this is my passion. I must. Find. It was just like, what do I like to do? I like to play music. I brought this little bass with me. We traveled all over wow. the world like a, a little acoustic electric, you know, mm -hmm. and I toted it, you know, all the way from Amsterdam to New Delhi, you know, mm -hmm. like it crazy and i played it whenever i could i would i at that time i had taken a couple lessons with someone in toronto uh he he told me like listen all you gotta do is learn the blues and you do the audition at york and you'll study with don thompson and you'll be fine you know <laughs> so i was like okay all i gotta do is learn how to play and he also showed me how to play so what and autumn mm -hmm. leaves and he turned nice. me on to portrait portrait in jazz uh bill evans and he turned me on to kind of blue mm -hmm. um and uh, and those were huge albums at the time for mm -hmm. me where I, I really, I was already getting into jazz. I was listening to Miles. I had uh, Live live at the Plaza mm -hmm. with like uh, the Sextet, you know, with yep. uh, Coltrane and Cannonball and Bill Evans, Miles, you know, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I had that album and I had a Charlie Parker album and I had a Monk album, uh, Monk Live with, Monk with Coltrane, mm -hmm. Live at the Half Note, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just sort of getting into this thing. And yeah, so I'd be <laughs> traveling and just sit by myself and play so wet, you know, quietly, you know, um, at some point in the day. And then I, that's when I realized, like, I, I could do this, you know. I, and uh, I thought, OK, I'm going to go to York and study jazz. And I didn't even really know what that meant. I have to say, I really didn't quite know what that meant. But that's what I thought. I just remember this teacher I had whose name uh, I can't remember, but I remember his house. Uh, he lived on DuPont in St. Clair. Cool house with other musicians. He was an electric bass player. He played in all these cool like rap. He played in like rap bands and uh, hard rock bands. And But he played double bass. He played in jazz. I thought, who is this guy? He's so cool, you know? And um, so I thought, that's what I want to do. And then we got back to Canada and my girlfriend's like, I'm going to study sociology at Concordia in mm. Montreal. And I said, ooh, Montreal. I like Montreal. I have all, only good memories, you know, of growing up there. Yeah. I said, I wonder if Concordia has a jazz program. So she had the course calendar. Remember the, the big yep. book where the you book. can see? Yep. So I flip it open, music department. And I flip, <laughs> jazz department. And then I see a picture of Charles Ellison. And I'm like, wow. I'll study at Concordia. It was like that simple, you know? <laughs> so we moved to Montreal in 90, 94. Mm -hmm. What a great year. Oh my God. Best, one of the best years of my life up to that point. I moved back to Montreal. And I was like, oh my God, I was meant to be here. Yeah. Like, this is yeah. my city. Oh my God. Yeah. It was just yeah. like, it was tangible. It was like, I, this is my city. And, uh, I just worked at a drugstore. I was like a stock boy, and I pr I took lessons with an electric bass player at Concordia, whose name was Alain Tourjean. Mm -hmm. He wasn't really playing on the scene. He taught at a, a CGEP, and he taught at Concordia part time, mm -hmm. and uh, he was amazing. He just mm -hmm. gave me like a good solid scale routine. Um, he got me playing through classical yep. etudes, and he got me learning. Um, songs and especially working on my bass lines and working on the blues yeah. and he just got me ready to do the audition and i aced the audition at concordia right. because i'd be practicing like six hours a day i mean i was having so much fun just like sit at home in my apartment practice and then like go to play you know go to uh uh my part-time job make like six dollars an hour <laughs> But I would eat my rent was 200 bucks, right? But yeah, so I know Montreal. Like, yeah, the most so I ever cheap. paid was $400 for in my own one bedroom flat. Isn't like, that it's crazy? crazy? It's crazy. It's my crazy. first rent was 175 for a shared It's crazy. It, I know, it made it easier to give us so a chance easier. to be artists. It gave yeah, us a 100%. chance 
It gave us such yeah. a chance. Um, yeah. And so yeah. I still wasn't in yeah. the artist. I was just like a 21 year old that worked at Cumberland Drugs in Westbound and <laughs> uh, practiced like electric bass quite a lot because this teacher was so good at like giving me stuff to work on. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, okay, he gave me this stuff. So I have yeah. to work on it. Right. Like mm -hmm. it was just, I yeah. never questioned it. I never thought like, oh, what does that land know? I was just like, I know nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just he just showed me the stuff. So yeah. yeah, I give it. So I check it out, check it out. And um yeah. when I got into Concordia, I mean, Alain knew I was getting in pretty early. He didn't tell me because he didn't mm -hmm. want me. He wasn't, he didn't want me to like Stop he didn't working? want to kill the momentum, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like he knew this guy yeah. is like he said to me once I got in, he said, you know. Uh, I have students at Concordia and I have students at the CJEP in um, uh, St. Estache. And he said, you're my best student and you don't go to either of those schools. It's it's crazy. Like everything I give you, you work on. I was like, oh, okay. And he said, you know, but one thing I'm worried about is you're very serious and I want you to, you know, playing music, you have to be lighthearted too. You have to have fun. I was like, oh, no, no, it's cool. I have fun. Don't worry. I have, it's just for the lessons, you know, he was my teacher. So I was always very like, I wanted to impress him, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, anyways, when I found out I got in, I was so happy. And uh, yeah. I went to the music department in the summer. I did like, because I still, I, I really didn't know much about I was quite naive still yeah, in a lot of ways. And I went to Peter Randall, who was the um, music tech. Mm -hmm. he, he made sure the music department, him and Kathy Watch, she was the secretary. She, the two of them made the music department run very smoothly. And I said, oh, hi, uh, my name's Adrian. Uh, I, I, I'm going to start here in the fall. And I was wondering, do you guys have a, like a double bass? And he looked at me like, <laughs> You know, it's the summertime. There's nobody in there, right? There's, there's not, a, there's not, nobody is in the department. And um, he was like, "Yeah, we have a base." He's like, uh, "What do you want with it?" I was like, "I don't know. I thought I could come here every day and practice on it." I took a few double bass lessons from a guy, and he showed me like half position. I'm telling you, you know. And so I would just. He said, "Okay." He got me a key. He said, "This is the key. Here's the base. It's in here," and I would just go wow. and practice wow. uh, every day at school. I thought that's what you're supposed to do, right? I, I didn't know any better. And he, meanwhile, I'm sure the teachers, uh, you know, all, all my my teachers at the time would have been like, who's practicing bass? Like, it's such a small department that 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 Loyola, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that Loyola um, uh, version, you know, the old music department at Loyola campus in NDG in Montreal. And it was so small. It was like, and so I'm sure they were like, oh, someone's practicing double bass. Huh? Who's this kid? Oh, this kid. Oh, he got it. Oh, look at him. He's keener. You know, they must've been like, oh, he's a keener. Okay. Um, you know, they never said anything to me. And then I met uh, in my first year, I studied with uh, uh, Andrew Holmesy in uh, for saxophone ensemble. We were mm -hmm. five horns two bassists, two drummers, and a uh, pianist. And I, 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 I switched somewhere in that year. I switched from electric bass to double bass. But I mm -hmm. studied on electric bass that first year because I didn't think I could, yeah, you know, okay. study music and switch to this new yeah. instrument. Yeah, it's tough. I thought yeah. I would make the transition. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, after, after that first year, I bought my double bass. I remember you were selling a base you were selling your first base oh remember the little five eight yeah there's a story there <laughs> which i don't know if we want to do publicly yeah that my whole base story is epic because i had that crap like yeah so i always used alec walkington's base because he had that old base that was cracked in it remember yes, Miguel? Yes. remember that one that everyone yes. kind of would use he was yeah. always like because it was such a i think it it's nice still premiere. there oh really but did he I fix think the so. crack <laughs> So, um, yeah, but that, that base, the, the one I was selling, I found out was, had actually been taken from a high school in Ottawa. So oh, as I was okay. trying to sell it, yes, uh, the person who had sold it to me said, I actually think it's actually belongs to it. And I was like, 
oh my gosh. So I made that guy take it back to the high school. Okay. <laughs> I was like, you need to return it. But then I had yes. no base and I had bought a base for Ottawa and it fell apart. Oh, uh, I don't know if you remember this whole story. It was quite, a, I was, cause I was one running around telling anybody who would listen, like, oh, I'm, 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 right now. I've just graduated. I have this chunk of money I need to spend. Anyway, I ended up finding, finding a base, but did you? Come and check out that base. Did I, I did. I came to be. That was the first time I met you. Met you at McGill, right? I yeah. think at McGill, and it would have been in night. That would have yeah, been in nineteen ninety six. Up in nineteen ninety six. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was, and I, 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 you know, and I guess, Glad yeah, you, didn't you were, buy it. <laughs> you were, yeah. Well, it was, it, it was. I think it was small, right? It was, it was five small. eighths. Yeah. Yeah. It was. I thin. ended up getting a three quarters, which is not yeah. much bigger, but yeah, you know, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. You remember Yeah, that's that. the first time I met you. So Oh my gosh. Wow. And sh shortly after I ended up buying my first base, which yeah. was this Korean um like a uh, hybrid, like wood top yeah. and yeah, plywood yeah. sides and it wow. was a good little base and that served me well. And then by my second year at Concordia, like Holmesy, Andrew Holmesy, mm -hmm. who's now in Nanaimo, I yep. think. Yep, he's out this way, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and um he brought me out on gigs and, Beautiful. and he brought me the first gig we did was a JJ Johnson, uh, Kai Winding tribute Beautiful. thing Love that with album. Dave Grott and Dave Martin. <laughs> and I was sort of like, when I, like, I didn't know who they were. And then we did the first rehearsal and I was like, Oh my God, these guys are like super good. Like, Oh, what? <laughs> really? And I, it was, it was, it was mm -hmm. something else. And, um, uh andrew gave like we also did i think we did one of the tunes we did was good bait and he gave me mm. the melody and i was like okay uh, uh it's funny like he never once said like um oh you know you'll be okay or or yeah. don't don't sweat it he just assumed i would know what to do and i did yeah. somehow intrinsically figure it out yeah but uh you know i figured out what i had to do and then a little while after that, Dave Turner started to call me for gigs. Yeah. These are all my professors at school, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm second year. I was studying improv with Dave, and now I'm doing gigs with him. Right. And we play trio with Claude Laverne, amazing and uh, great drummer in Montreal, yeah. Claude Laverne. Uh, real bright red hair, I you know? know. Like, and he had quite a lot of chutzpah in those days. And oh, so he is, he is a feisty dude. Yeah, and yeah, so, sure. but he was always cool. He was easy to play with. He was mm -hmm. a great drummer as a yeah. young bass player. I mean, wow, he 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 just laid it down. It was yeah. he made your life easy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I would do these gigs, and Dave would solo, and then I had to solo. I'm like, oh, this is not fair, you know? <laughs> oh, like, God. oh, gee, I, I didn't sign like, up for this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I know we always have to follow like the sax player. Uh, yeah, and the, we did, and we were guitar player. Yeah, we weren't playing uh, with a cordex, so we were we no. were playing trio. Dave was like, "Oh, I'm looking for a different sound." We played some ornette tunes, and we played a bunch yeah. of standards. And Dave would play always play like, you know, one killer ballad per set. It was yeah. like unbelievable, you know. So yeah. yeah, it's all this stuff that starts to 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 start rolling when you're when you're. Um, when you really decide, and it's yeah. funny, I think that's such an important thing about being a bass player or a musician in mm -hmm. general, or maybe mm -hmm. anything you do in life is mm -hmm. just really making a decision and committing to it. Like, mm -hmm. and even if you don't understand what that means, and I yeah. definitely did not, no. I did yeah. not know what I was getting myself involved in, you know, and each, each time, you know, you get another from someone and you're like oh, okay i gotta check this music out i gotta get on mm -hmm. top of this and you mm -hmm. you have to figure out a way mm -hmm. to make it work and and you learn something and a lot often it's quite abstract too it's mm -hmm. just a feeling like oh that went well oh yeah mm -hmm. i know what i'm doing on that mm -hmm. you know on that mm -hmm. kind of a groove on that on that harmony wow that harmony mm -hmm. is pretty tough and mm -hmm. somehow we figure it out a way and um yeah well, so that's things the that's the that's the the long the version. No, of it's so it great. Up. <laughs> There's a couple of things that I I, I want to pull out from that story that resonated with me. The first one is this, um, those formative years when you were just gathering with people that you like to hang out with and and creating co-creating together. How much learning can happen in those environments? Um, 
and how at the core of, of this music in particular, it is that it is about community. Um, I yes. think a friend of mine um, who teaches Orbert, who teaches a, in, in Chicago, uh, 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 he talks about jazz as being a culture at its core, a culture of care. And it being yeah. sort of medicinal in a way, like you gather and you make music together at its very core. And I think, yeah. you know, it resonates with me because I know for me, um, I didn't also didn't have any formal training. It was the band room at school, really. And we started getting gigs for $20 and a burger when we were like 14. And, yeah. Right. Wow. We were just getting together. And, and the idea of it wasn't so much that I wanted to pursue music per se, because that felt like a really weird path like i don't even know what that's going to look like like what do you do yeah. in a jazz bass thing but the yeah. idea of not having that feeling of being in a room with other people making music together and having fun in that way i was really painful to just think oh just that i'm not just not going to do that anymore like yeah that's really weird to me because i just feel so good when it's when it's really gelling it's like nothing else you know yeah, it's, not, um, it's, it's, it's an it's amazing thing it's an yeah. amazing thing and the other yeah. thing that stands out to me is how much and the same thing happened for me where people saw more in me than i could have possibly seen in myself yeah. and put me yeah. in situations where i was like really you're asking me to do this and they're like, of course. And then they're just putting stuff in front of you. And maybe you're like, whoa, whoa, okay, whoa. This is feels beyond what I can do. And then you can you kind of rise up to it. Uh, and yeah. and you know, maybe and so so those two stories for me, I, I mean, I really resonate with. I I I feel those stories and like they're part of my journey too. Um yeah. and I think it's important for especially our young musicians who may be watching to to know that. I think for both you and I, you know, uh, we didn't plan anything, <laughs> right? Yeah. We did. There was no plan. It was just sort of, I like this. This is fun. Yeah. I'm going to keep going. I'm just going to walk through this door. Oh, this person says I should do this. They're, they kind of see something in me. Okay. I'm going to yeah. trust that and walk through that door. Oh, now my professors are asking me to play with them. Whoa. And then you're just like, wow, I'm the most green person on the bandstand. But holy cow, am I ever learning a lot by just saying yes to it and getting on the bandstand yes. and giving it a go. I mean, Greg Clayton, I hope Greg's watching because we love you, Greg. Um, Greg used to like we'd go through a whole night. I would not know one song. <laughs> like he'd be like, I, I always know. joke like a song like, do you know, up the hill and over the mountain? I'm like, never heard of it. He's like. You'll get it. Starts on the two chord. Here we go. And I'd be like, ah. You know, the first like months of doing that, I was like, ah. And then I was like, yeah. And he was never, ever, ever anything but calm, kind, um, yeah, totally supportive. Hey, let me yeah. let me tell you all the ways you can get from the one chord to the two chord. You can go one, two, three, flat three diminished to two. You can go one, four, three, yeah. six, two. And he just show me like da 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 da. You'll get it. <laughs> and I'd yeah. be like, okay, 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 all right. So <laughs> it's just in those moments, like I actually think some of my biggest teaching moments were these random little moments of I get this golden nugget of information a lot of it happened yeah. with my now husband tilden we'd be on a bus from the west island and he'd be like you know when you're playing the minor chord you always play the flat sevens you know you should try the melodic minor in your walking line and i was like oh he's like because you get the leading tone natural stick i'd be like oh <laughs> i remember we were on a bus i was like okay yeah. you're you probably coming watch. back from were you coming back from boomers yes <laughs> yes you took the bus. You guys had to take the bus I out took the there. Bus to Boomers. That's awesome. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he. So yeah, I remember I was saying to students the other day, like at my grandma's house on the organ, he's showing me, you know, mixed leading passing tone scales, and I was like in Saskatchewan, like figuring this stuff out. But you know, these beautiful moments with these beautiful musicians who just yeah. either by on the bandstand, just showing yeah. you. But yeah. there's this never this feeling of like, especially for us young bassists, like just the generosity of spirit that that we experienced. Um, again, it, 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 I am so grateful for it. And I try and pay that forward in, in how I move now and just try and be that person to um, to the younger. Now that we're like, how I don't know I how know. we are, the age we are, but we're sort of we're in that age. We're, we're like the, age the middle that a lot age of our, Yeah. 
We're the age that a lot of our professors were. Yeah. Yeah. We it's really nice. are. We're that we're we we've you know, yeah. it's it's amazing. Like yeah. um that's uh, pretty wild. It goes fast, doesn't it? It's funny how it 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 does sometimes seem like a long it's like you look back, you're like, wow, that was a long time ago. And other times you're like, Man, it just feels like the yeah. other day that we were doing this and yeah, figuring this stuff out and yeah. yeah. Well, because I still kind of feel the same way when I'm playing, like, you know. I still, have I still that. feel like I'm learning all the time, all the time. you know, it's and I'm always everything. amazed yeah. Yeah. at what, well, it's, it's this whole thing when we're, when we get together, we're really sharing ideas and we don't have to, and most of it is not spoken. And that's yeah. really beautiful. Yeah, That's pretty amazing. Like yeah. all this stuff that we, you know, when someone plays something, you're like, yeah, you know, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and know, and and but it goes somewhere in it 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 it'll resonate in you for a while you know and mm -hmm. later sometimes this stuff comes back and and it become part of you now and you didn't talk about it you didn't work on it you mm -hmm. you just you shared um you know uh music with other people i mean that's what it's about it really is about that it is about mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. and that's what i love about jazz music mm -hmm. you know i just love that um i love playing with other people listening to them and trying to get mm -hmm. inside what they're doing you know yeah, it's just 100%. the best yeah 100 percent. so here i have to i'm gonna we're, we're getting we're getting close to the end of our hour so i want i do want to ask you this question yes. um because i i am an i know we're both active teachers i actually have so many students that are coming your way to Miguel. I'm just sending yes. them off. Um, so my question for you is around sort of this idea that now you're the mentor and you're you're the teacher now. What are some of the things that you find the common challenges you see with young bass? Well, it doesn't have to be just bass students, but just young musicians. Um, but maybe we'll stick to bass, like specifically on yeah. the bass. And what do you like? What are some sample things that you might do to get them to work through stuff? And it could be like philosophical things or it could be like literally like technical things on the instrument. Um, yeah. What are your like top three things that you'd focus on with your, 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 your well, students? I mean, with, okay. Uh, there's a few, there's obviously a lot of things, but uh, a big one is intonation, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, intonation is, uh, is, is brutal on the double bass it's, it's, so it's brutal it's brutal let's just be honest it's brutal <laughs> there's nothing harder than recording if you're i know you're, you're like, doubling oh. this line with the with the horn you're doubling this line with the <laughs> no. piano you you know you're doubling this line with the guitar yeah i mean it's so different the way you have to tune with 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 a saxophonist or a trumpet or or a piano or a guitar yeah, yeah. it's amazing yeah you know it's so subtle it like so okay yeah it's a so little roll I really like just think... a slight oh and then you God. have a piano and the piano if it's not quite in tune you have to it's navigate a little funky that. yeah mm -hmm. so i mean so i intonation. think yeah. intonation um should be something that we all work on and constantly strive to to improve if we yeah. just try a little bit every day to to work on our intonation it, mm -hmm. it does improve it's mm -hmm. amazing you know mm -hmm. and so uh i had a teacher he was uh at concordia he was my double bass teacher it uh he was a tough guy eric Lagasse. yeah oh, i had him too <laughs> yep eric eric was tough. brutal sharp he was flat sharp flat flat you're flat, sharp adrian you're sharp, sharp. sharp you're sharp. sharp adrian you're flat what kind of figuring is that you know <laughs> did you practice this how much did you practice and uh he was yeah. very tough and he, tough. he we just i don't know about you but we only worked on Samandel. My I studied with him for a year and um yeah. we just worked on Samandel. Yeah. yeah. And it was really uh hard. Yeah. But I worked on it and uh, I used to practice it every I would work on it two hours every day. And at one point he's like, you know, it's not enough. It's you you gotta be it's gotta be better. I said, Okay, I just get tired after two hours. It's so brutal. He said, yeah. Okay, just do an hour and a half in the morning and an hour and a half in the evening. I was like, oh, I never thought of breaking up my practice. <laughs> so that's what I would do with Eric that year. I would I would do three hours of Samandal every day. And I didn't understand at that time 
that that was kind of crazy because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I was in the big band. I had improv. That's I was right. playing with lots of people. I was learning tunes. I was doing other stuff too, but I would work on Samandal and I never understood the impact that it had on me. It just was this slightly horrible task that I had to get through and do it. You know, it was very dry, <laughs> but I learned how to play mm-hmm. the bass in, mm-hmm. in a certain fashion. Mm-hmm. 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 And so I often ask students to now, it took me a long time to mm-hmm. figure it out. Uh, I didn't get my first students um, to learn some handle because I thought, oh, it's so mm-hmm. boring. Like, let's. Let's find another way to get there. But mm. there's 40 pages. If you learn those 40 pages, mm. you learn a way to play the bass. So yeah. working on your hand, it gives you the it gives you all the what all what the is left this sp- stuff? Like hand? where where yeah. is everything? Where does it all lie there's in this camera. space? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How what's the grip? What's the grip? What's, what's, what's yeah? Yeah. What's the what's yeah. the space there and what's the space yeah. there and what's yeah. the space? So you it know. becomes intuitive. So when you're soloing things like you know you can kind of grab intervals you're looking for or hearing you know do you want yeah. your voice to be able to come out you don't want to be yeah. shackled by yeah. your limitations on the yeah. instrument yeah. yeah yeah yeah. you know yeah. um yeah. so i think but you know there's lots of ways to work on it you could just learn melodies and really yeah. try to play it in tune you play scales yeah. play or, arpeggios yeah. Yeah. obviously yeah. right all that stuff work on bach um yeah uh but, so intonation, yeah. Samandal. Um, what else? What else is a is a? I a think I think um, I always was a real believer in um, learning tunes well, mm. and so mm-hmm. and by myself, like being able to play the tune by myself. So play mm-hmm. the melody, and then play the bass part. Mm-hmm. Play in two. I know mm-hmm. it sounds so simple. But I saw Patitucci talk about this recently. He's like, yeah, I've just been working on melodies, playing two, playing four, and then I improvise a bit. And then I was like, I mean, if Patitucci's still working on this, we can all still work on this. It's fine. Because he's really good. <laughs> he's he's one of the greatest bass players of all time. So, yeah. you know, he's still working on navigating songs. Mm-hmm. It's so beautiful. Like mm-hmm. when we play bass, like, Playing in two is such a vibe, and there, mm. there's so much, um, you know, it's not one simple thing. It's so broad. Mm. That pa- of just playing in two and then playing in four, and you can solo as if you're playing in two. You can solo as if you're playing in four, totally. two. It doesn't have to be an accompaniment thing. It can just be a feel thing. And I think just learning songs well. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So that's it. And the third thing is listening to a ton of music mm-hmm. right because i'm yeah. pretty sure that's what we did okay. i think we listened to a ton of music and we just we we absorbed stuff by osmosis yeah yeah, yeah. you know 100 percent. but really 100%. if you if you can learn how to play your instrument you know how to play some songs well Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, if you've listened enough to the tra- to enough of the tra- not just the tradition, like whatever gravitates you gravitate towards too, you know, mm-hmm. um, and not just jazz, of course. I mean, uh, but if you really want to be a jazz musician, you do have to listen to quite a lot of jazz. Absolutely. You have to love it. Yeah, you have. To I love mean, it. I yeah. still love playing Stella by Starlet. I still I, like I. It's an amazing song. Yeah. It's one of the first songs I ever learned. It's mm-hmm. incredible. I'm like, this is a weird first song to learn. This is really hard. Why did it's we hard. learn all learn this first song? Because of Miles. We love hearing Miles play it. And right. and, and, all and the so things many other you are, it's hard too. <laughs> I still love so playing hard. all the things you are. It's I just love it. Tune. I just love it. I love it. I could play it all day long. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, getting back to the love. Um, plus, you know, what I've I, I started getting students. I started doing this. I kind of started thinking of my technical practice more as meditation than um, than practice because, yeah. uh, and I put use drones and stuff to, yeah. to kind of just get in the zone. Sometimes like a cool, like I have a percussion app that's like live musicians playing all these groups. <laughs> so I just yeah. sort of like, you know, set my stage um, and get students to do the same. And because when things are in alignment, technically and and intonation wise it's like you can hear the sunshine shows up it's like bing, yeah. <laughs> you know right it's just like ah. and uh 
yeah, to try and reframe that whole process of getting deeper with the bass, letting the bass really resonate and sing and, you know, yeah. provide that foundational, beautiful. It, it's, form. it's you, you, so many. You've spent, you've spent a lot of time on that. I mean, that's one of the things that stands out about your bass playing, I, I think, for me. Um, and, and in particular, again, circling back to the code uh, quartet, because, um, it's so you hear like I was the opening tune is in two, right? <laughs> so it's yeah. funny you would talk about that. Uh, yeah. And I just I was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like the modern playing has to be grounded in what came before. And there's the simple. Well, isn't it Charles Mingus that says anyone can take the simple and make it complex? But yes. real creativity is when you take the complex and keep it simple. And yes. I know that there's times where as a bass player, you got to be OK, like playing like basically one note for yeah. a long period of time with such intensity and, and such um, intention Absolutely. and be OK. If that's what's serving the song, then, you know. That's what we got to do. If it's, it often is the best choice. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Put that root know. on a downbeat. Oh my God, what's wrong right? with the downbeat? It's so I nice. I love the downbeat. <laughs> yeah, that's where the uh, uh, happens. Uh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's funny. <laughs> this has been a funny time. I, 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 I really have always, uh, I was never that great at playing on the blues when I was first coming up. I, I've always found that that modal playing that that just the, that the dominant is the one. It took me a while to to hear that. Hear it. Mm -hmm. um, and but I got into it because, you know, it was just so important to learn how to play well on it. And I could always mm. walk well on it, but I would find it hard to solo on it. And mm. and these days I just love playing the blues and I find in these times of trouble it it just makes so much sense when you're playing it it's yeah. such a release for a lot of um angst and a lot of uh uh you know fears and all yeah. the things all the all the difficulties that you might be going through and i think um that's another thing for young students is to just work on the blues i know it's so sometimes it's simple like just yeah. work on the blues and like when I say work on the blues, I just mean like, you know, you wake up one day, you do some technical stuff and then, you know, you play, play a tune, play a blues head, start walking, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then improvise over that, play it out. Mm -hmm. Next day, do the same thing. Next day, mm -hmm. do the same thing. Next mm -hmm. day, do the same things. After a year, you'll start to sound pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's, it's that long view. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I know some people, I've met such talents. You meet some people, mm. you're just like, oh my God, how do you, how did you get this all together so fast? But that's mm. not the way I am. I'm more of a slow and steady kind of person. And I love, I actually love practicing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've noticed that in the, in this pandemic that I was like, I have nothing to do but practice. Oh, great. This is actually <laughs> cool. Um, that's amazing. And it it's so I think it's important to just whatever it is, if it's half an hour a day, I tell students all the time, half an hour a day. But yeah. if you work on that half an hour, yeah. like it's stuff that you keep working on. Don't yeah. don't float around, don't noodle. Uh David yeah. Lieben said in a in a clinic once, practicing is pract is is playing the same thing day after yeah. day. Hundred yeah. percent. It's so, and it's so simple. And my kids learning violin, I, I've, I've yeah. been inspired by them. June has yeah. studied for 11 years and yeah, it's amazing to see like the first year I could play everything that June could play on the violin as well. I, I was like, I had a full size and I would learn it. I'd learn the pieces with June, like, oh, this is cool. And then after a year, I couldn't keep up and it was, yeah. it's also difficult. It's so small. Diligent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, I watched how it just they they work on violinists they work on a tune mm -hmm. and they master that tune mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then they go on to another one. And mm -hmm. it did do June did that for 11 years. It's amazing mm -hmm. to hear what they can play. Mm -hmm. Um, they're going a different route, they're going into uh, computer science and mathematics at mm -hmm. Vanier in uh September, but I'm blown away by um 
uh, in French, we say the parcours by 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 June's journey on the violin. Mm -hmm. It's it was amazing to see as a dad. Like obviously, I'm proud as a dad, but it's also as a musician. You're just like, wow, mm. it is. I know it's true. Like it's it's it's. I'm sure if I could look back in a way in a similar way on myself, I would see that. But with your kid, you can see it's so much easier, and you. It's really interesting to see development uh through 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 your child because you see all the th like how everything is built and how they can get from the very beginning to quite yeah. a lot of ability and you're like you're only 16 years old that's yeah, amazing. amazing so how do you build you know you could imagine if you do that for another 60 years you know yeah another thing i really like is uh when i've heard older musicians uh, when I was younger, um, say things like uh, Gene Berdensini gave a clinic at uh, Concordia once. And mm -hmm. he was, I think, in his 60s at the time. Mm -hmm. I could be off. Uh, I hope I didn't age him too much. But it, uh, I think he was in his early, I think he said he was 62. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the clinic, he, he was talking about uh, getting into playing solo guitar a lot. Yeah. Um, and he said, you know, at the end of it, he's like, you know, uh, and he was really earnest and, and he just, and this guy, like, you know, the clinic, I, I, I just was blown away by how this guy played. And at the end of it, he said, um, you know, I really feel if I, if I really just dig in the next bunch of years on this, uh, you know, I'm, uh, on this path that I'm on right now, I'll really, I, I'm, I think I'm close to really finding something. <laughs> and it wasn't bullshit. Like, right. you know, it no, wasn't, it was okay. wasn't, he wasn't, uh. It was, he really meant it. And I looked right. at him like, and something clicked, like it doesn't ever stop no. this no. process. So you need yeah. to be open to it. For all young students, I always say yeah. like, you're at the beginning. Yeah. It's a great place to be. Don't yeah. be in a rush. I was, no. I know I was in a rush when I was at Concordia. I know I was in a rush to, to learn, to go, 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 keep going more and faster, you know? But uh, I, I often think like, it's such a great, time to be at the beginning it's yeah. a beautiful time beautiful you know time. and um and if you, you we'll can all keep that if you can keep that beginner mentality like that idea of wonder and like oh, wow like just curiosity and wonder energy yeah. about the whole thing if you can stay in that space that is the key whenever you've played so. with these older musicians who still have that twinkle in their eye yeah. They're just genuinely so really excited to share the stuff they've checked out or, you know, they're still like trying new things or thinking of new projects. Um, and I remember, I know it resonates when you talk about your children, because I remember watching Tristan as a young one. So, and he still is, we try and keep cultivating that, like just curiosity and like, what are you into and try stuff out and experimenting and just no inhibitions, of trying things. I really, like, I remember sitting there thinking, Oh no, I think I've lost some of that sparkle, that, that wonder, you know, and, and he actually yeah. helped me bring it back into my own life of just, yeah. what are we going to make today? What are we going to create? What are we going to work on? What are we going to explore? You know, it's almost like a scientist, like a music yeah. scientist rather yeah, than uh, worrying about like the end results all the time. Um, and like, I don't know about you, but you know, you're on a lot of albums and stuff and, and I don't go back and listen to them. <laughs> Very often at all because it's like all right moving on to the next thing or you yeah. know just like I okay like, you know yeah i listened so. to the code album the other day because i was giving an interview in french on radio canada with stanley yeah. payen yeah. and i realized i hadn't listened to the album since uh you know since we did the mixes Mixing. jimmy was yeah, doing yeah. the mixes jim doxis uh who plays drums on the album yeah. fantastic yeah. Montreal drummer and he also mixed the album and he yeah. did an amazing job. Um, we recorded it at uh, his dad's studio, yeah. Boutique de Son in Point Claire. And uh, I hadn't listened to it. It had been quite a long time. It had been about um, almost a year since yeah. I had listened to it. And so I said, I better listen to it. I got to talk to Stanley about the music. I don't, I know the music, but I don't even remember what we really played. And I was listening yeah. to it and I was like, oh, you know, I should go back and listen to old albums. Yeah sometimes to just celebrate. once 
yeah. just once, you know, like just yeah. to remember like yeah. uh, what you were doing. But yeah, it's funny. Like um, there's such a neat thing about, okay, we did that. Good. What's the next thing? Yeah. What's yeah. coming up? Like, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and so yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we, we do have short memories and that does help us in a lot of ways to keep going because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you might hang fun. on to mistakes or like you can't yeah. if you're in the zone, you can't be like, I mean, there's things, there's moments on every album. I'm like, ooh, yeah, yeah, yikes. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't fantastic. Yeah. But I like going like way away from it and then coming back and going, oh, actually, there's some nice moments on this. I, I'm less focused on the things I don't like and more. I'm able to sort of see the entirety but you know adrian yeah. i want to flip before we let you go um yeah. i want to go to our speed round so our speed round is generally we ask all our guests to answer five questions and it's sort of like quick answers so we don't okay. you know just a couple of sentences um just to wrap up our, our conversation here with a little awesome. bow tie okay so first of all what is your favorite venue to play in oh okay uh well I'm going to go with local because uh, I'm going to say two, so I don't get in too much trouble. But Upstairs Jazz Club and Diaz Ons Jazz Club, I just love playing in these clubs and I just have so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. They're I love the... playing in a jazz club. I just love it. That's yeah. where we, that's our home. It really yeah, is. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's our it's our church, you know, it's it really our church. is. It's, it yeah, is. Yeah, it really is. It is. And yeah. it's not the same. I mean, played the Montreal Jazz Fest on those big stages it feels so strange to have your audience so far away and you're so high yeah. up and you know it doesn't yeah. it's not you know you need to be close enough to smell i love <laughs> you know? I, I i love it you know what it's yeah. it's i haven't it's been a little while now since i've played mm -hmm. in one of those clubs and mm -hmm. and uh, i miss it like all yeah. the different strange people that you meet on the I break know. and Sometimes you're not in the mood. Sometimes you're really in the mood. You meet yeah. people. People can just walk in. It's so yeah. intimate. It really yeah. is so intimate, eh? Playing in a yeah. little club like that. It's really fantastic. You yeah. you can't go anywhere you, at both of those clubs. I can't go There's no green backstage. Room. No. There's no backstage. I have to get off the stage and walk through the whole yeah. crowd. And and that's good. That's a good thing, actually. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, 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 when I was more nervous... It was it would be really hard, especially when I saw people that were really yeah, I know, that I looked I know, up to. I know. And I always That's... wanted to. I had this sort of thing where I wanted to apologize, but deep down I knew like they don't want you to. They don't want to hear that, and so no. I wouldn't do it. But I, I, it would be hard, you know. Like I'd be like, yeah. in my mind, I'd be like, I didn't do so good on that one. I could do better, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, I know, um, I know, I know. You know, but I you know. get used to it, and after a while, you forget about it, and then, and then. Uh, I played a gig with well with Jimmy and Chet and Mark Copeland mm -hmm. um, before we recorded the Doxis Brothers album. We did two nights at Diazons, and Donato was right by the stage. And afterwards, yeah. he said he said to me, "Your solo on Goodbye." Uh, we played Goodbye, which we recorded oh, on the I album. He said, you, "He's like, that's a real bass solo, man. That was oh, an amazing oh, bass." Solo. I mean, Michel. to hear that from Michelle was like I wanted to cry. I know. You know, I really He's wanted so to cry. He's this so guy, amazing. remember hearing this guy? Ugh. Well, I studied with him. Oh, you did. Year. Yeah, I, oh, I didn't was, know that. Dude, like it was like just jaw dropping. Like just he'd take anyone's base, yeah. scrub it and it would just be like, "How are you doing that?" It was like anyone's base. And then yeah. he was working on a solo show where he was singing and yes. playing at the same time and yes. he would show me what he was working on and i i just was be like ah this is uh not gonna happen i just got a text from amanda <laughs> saying we need to move this along yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> we need to just hang out Adrian. Pressure. we're gonna have a zoom yes. call maybe if anybody yes. wants to join for a base hang we'll have to have like a base <laughs> zoom hang yeah anyway next Stories from the bandstand. Another time. We'll have to yes. come you back. Okay. So quickly, number two. Preferred time <laughs> to be creative. <laughs> this is not short. Morning. Morning. If morning. you were to be uh, yeah. morning. Okay, sure. great. Yeah. Uh if you weren't a musician's a musician, what would you be interested in doing? Walking dogs. <laughs> I thought that would be a good, I saw this person on the mountain walking seven dogs. And I said, cause uh, oh, I said, God. I could do that. I could be a dog walker. 
I think I would be actually quite happy walking dogs. So that's it. I don't have a lot of skills, Jody. I can play bass and that's about it. So dog walkers, number two. Oh my there God, you, go. you are awesome. Okay. <laughs> Who would you uh, most like to have dinner with and what would you serve them? Oh, oh, I'd have to cook for them. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Or what would you eat? What would you, maybe you oh, could okay. take them out for dinner, but what would you want to eat? I'd like to, uh, I, uh, do you, do you know who Larry David is? Yes. Kirby, Kirby Enthusi- yeah. So uh, he's my favorite human oh my being. Gosh. Yes. And so uh, I think we'd, I'd like to go for, I'd like to go, yeah. I'd like to go for Chinese food with him. Oh, I think beautiful. it would be fun. I don't know if he eats that anymore. He's gotten kind of weird with his health stuff, I think. But if we could go for Chinese wow. food, that would be amazing. I love him. In fact, sometimes I joke, I, I joke that Tilden is Larry David someday. <laughs> bizarre things happen to him. I'm like, you are Larry David. Um, what would be the one bit of advice you would give your 18-year-old musician self? Ooh. It would have to be a little old. Oh, yeah, I was playing. So I was playing electric. Yeah, what would I say? Wow. Just keep doing what you, I, I was in such a good space with music at 18. It, it set me up for it set me up for life because I just loved it. I just that's all that matters. And I think I knew that somehow I knew that mm-hmm. intrinsically and it, it took a long time to realize it. But just keep loving music because it, it's going to serve you well. And I I. I really do believe that music is such a powerful, powerful um, uh, medium. It's 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 amazing. Uh, I, I I especially during this pandemic, I've gotten to a place where I realize how it can be taken away from you, you know, yeah. and and it I get so emotional. I, I was playing last night with Christine's Equal uh, Orchestra. And it was, I, I started to tear up before the downbeat. Mm. I just, I'm getting like, I think it's hormonal too. I'm turning 50 in about two more years. I, I, I'm turning into a big sap or something. But no, like really though, just l- like, it's so powerful. And just, um, you don't, yeah. I know we have to pay bills and I know we, you know, you have to make a money and you have to navigate music as a career can be, yeah, challenging and confusing. But it, that that whole thing, the career thing, has nothing to do with music. Music is mm-hmm. still what it is, just beautiful, pure thing. And it's important to keep that um, passion that you have and guard it. Like it's not, it's not something to take for granted. That passion is so important. So that that's all. Just the just to you know, I would have told myself just, yeah, you know, this, this, this thing that you have, you know how you feel real happy when you're playing music, make sure you always feel real happy when you're playing music. Uh, You can have bad days. You can have bad gigs. That's no big deal. That's no big deal. That doesn't, that, that's in the, in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter, but just keep that joy. And it's so important. It'll serve you well, you know, and I have good days and bad days, right? Like we all do. So we all do. But it's but, a it's a jungle gym. It's not a it's not a straight line. Yeah, <laughs> it really sure. is. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Hey, this Ethan. is awesome. This you, 70 minutes went by. I know. So fast. Well, there's so much wisdom, and oh. I've just loved hanging out with you. Um, um, I think I feel like we're kindred spirits in a lot of ways, and we do Absolutely. similar things at different <laughs> We have similar careers in different jurisdictions, so I when I, when, uh, when, uh, when I'm when we're out on the west coast, when we can travel again, because Kate's parents live in Victoria, yeah. we'll come for a come visit. visit. We're gonna come, come visit. visit you. We'll come do a little bit. Ba- we'll play some duo. I would love that. Maybe we'll yeah, do like we'll a live stream duo hang. We'll do. Why we'll not? Just play. We'll play and chat and. Yeah, let's do jam. it. That would That'd be, be really, so really fun. fun. That'd be really, really fun. It's it's oh really nice it. to connect with you. You too. And thanks yeah. to all of the friends that have been on uh chiming in. And uh there's a couple of comments about amazing conversations and fun conversations. So a lot of I think mutual people who know us both, some you know, we send a bunch of BC kids out to to the McGill yes, world. So there's so a lot good. of They're a lot so of BC. Good. Yeah. Such well, talent. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah uh, some had, of the we've... talent that comes out from the West Coast. I'm always impressed. And a lot of times on auditions, we don't always get them. They often, they sometimes go to other schools. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> but I'm sometimes I'll look to be like some kid will be just swinging. 
And I look down at the teacher and it's you. It's always you. I tell you, when they're from the West Coast and the kid is swinging, it's always you, the teacher. I'm like, oh, damn. thank you. Like, no, but so many times, I can't tell you like how many times I've been on the audition. It's like, this kid swings, right? And then we look, you know, because they, they have that information package and we're like, Jody Prosnick. You're like, wow. <laughs> Got to get well, that instructional video. Dude, I I just, uh, yeah. I mean, we I talk about the quarter note. We could go on for another 15 minutes. But I mean, for me, I just, I'm like, the quarter note needs to be heart shaped. It's got to yes. have a point to it and just like bounce along. I mean, that's Absolutely. the tradition. It's it's the heartbeat. So, Absolutely. so if you're not prepared to do that, then maybe you should find a different instrument because that's yeah. our job. If minute it that's says it. swing. You, you got to give it. And yeah. uh, so we spend a lot of time talking about that because yeah. I tell them just like you and I, we realize pretty quickly that when you come from that energy on the van stand, that is the f best way we can serve the whole world. Really. I mean, yeah. that's our, our, when people are just feeling that feeling it in their hips and their feet, Absolutely. you know, in the floor, it's just gets them out of their head and into their, into their bodies, into That's their it. feet. So That's it. it's our job, ultimately. Yeah. Good Stance job, music. right? <laughs> it's a great job. It's a great job. <laughs> so um, thank you so much. Give my love to Kate and your beautiful kids and to all of Will our do. dear friends in Montreal. Um, I know I can speak for Tilden and I that we miss you guys. It's It's been 20 years, but yeah, we still it's... feel like it was yesterday. We still feel like, you know, we miss everybody out that way so much. So yeah. Um, so keep doing your beautiful work, my friend. And you as um, well. And we great will see to you. talk to you. Great and to great talk to, to you see too. you. And yeah. See you Thanks soon. Thanks everybody. I hope. We'll see you soon. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We'll talk to you later.